Imagine a world with army of AI agents working around the clock just for you. Stay with me and I'll show you step by step how you can create your custom AI agents because let's just face it, nobody likes to do repetitive tasks. So a few days ago, Microsoft Research came out with Autogen. It is an amazing research paper. If I had to summarize for you, a TLDR is like instead of one human and one chatbot, talking to each other, trying to solve a problem. It's like one human and lots of chatbots talking to each other. Now you ask, how's that better? It's like you're making a simple tasks more complex. Not really. Before, let's say you wanted to create a poem. You give a prompt to ChatGPT. ChatGPT comes up with a poem and then you give feedback on it that, oh, I like this, but maybe you don't use the word potato too much. And a second version is there. Now, this is something that you want to avoid because your goal was to create just an amazing, beautiful poem, but you didn't want it to get involved in feedbacks like five, six, seven times. Sometimes it takes 10 times. Now, if you just had an AI agent that was there to give feedback on it, you are out of the loop. So once you give like, oh, give me a poem about chocolates, you can just go grab dinner, you can just sleep and there is going to be this amazing, beautiful system of multiple AI agents talking to each other, doing your work. And that's what we are going to do. Let me give you quickly some applications that Microsoft tried to implement and they were successful with. So math problem solving, multi-agent coding, online discussion marketing, retrieval augmentation, all of these six implementations that they have done they have shown some amazing code examples for it. I really want to encourage my viewers to read some technical papers. If you can't read technical papers, just go through the abstract. It's just like one paragraph. And I want you guys to dive in and take a look into these papers because this is where all of the amazing research is actually going to show up. Now let's dive into the section for which you guys are all here for. So this is our step-by-step -step autogen guide. This Jupyter Notebook is going to be in comment section as well. So if you want to just go ahead and download it, you already have a really good starting point to create your own AI agents. First, we are installing PyAutogen. So simply shift enter, run the command. Then we have to import PyAutogen library and we have to initiate it. Now, here is something that is really important. This file called OAI config list. If you double click it, it's a really simple file. We are explaining which model we will be using. I'm here using GPT-4, but you can use other models such as GPT-3.5 as well. If you wanna create like an AI agent that is not really expensive to run, use GPT-3.5. And then we have to give API key. Now, where do you get this API key? All you have to do is go to OpenAI API, click on login. Once you log in, you will be on a different page, just click on personal, that's my account, and then view API keys. Once you click on that, you will be here and then you can create whatever key you have, or you can just create a new one and paste it there. Now, don't worry, I'm gonna delete all of those keys before I publish the video, but don't publish your API keys anywhere else on the internet, otherwise you will have like amazing heavy bill on the API usage. Then configurations, we will configure it. All of these coding steps that I'm doing, they're really simple. We are just telling Autogen to use GPT-4 and we are just giving that API key so it can actually make calls to OpenAI for running those models. Then after finishing configuration, we have to initialize agents. For this simple demo purposes, we are just creating two agents. First one is an assistant agent and second one is user proxy agent. Now let's walk line by line. We created this assistant called assistant and random seed is 42. Just for consistency purposes, I'm putting that seed so that every time I run, I have like somewhat similar answers. Temperature is zero here. That value varies between zero and one. The higher the value, the more variation you will get in answers. You know, when you talk to Bing chat, you have two options, three options actually that consistent, creative, or not so creative answers. That's basically the temperature. And then once you create an assistant agent, we're gonna create a user proxy agent. Now, this is important. User proxy agent is just an agent that will provide feedback on your behalf. 
So instead of you coming in and saying, oh, I don't like this poem, user proxy agent will be like, oh, I think my actual user would not like this answer. So why don't you just tweak a little bit? And the assistant agent is going to create a new version. So that's where the second AI model comes. Here I have set human input never, meaning I do not want to get involved whatsoever. You two AI models figure out what will I need and I don't want to get involved in this process. Max consecutive auto reply is set to 10. Now that means how many back and forth is allowed. If I don't set this to a specific number, there could be an edge case scenario where these two models just keep on talking to each other and I will be crying because my API calls will be so expensive that I will be paying like $20 monthly, which I can't afford. <laughs> so that's, that's why we are setting this maximum limit. Uh, is termination message. So once we find that, okay, we have satisfied our initial condition, we have satisfied what the user wanted, they will terminate. And then we run this. So let's start by importing. So once we import, then we are creating the assistant agent and the user proxy agent. And once we have those two user proxy agent and assistant agent, we can run the code. And this should be here. And it says, write a Python program that prints first 20 Fibonacci numbers, save them, save the well-documented code in a file named fib.py. So let's just change the fib2.py and run it. And there you go. These two AI agents are already talking to each other, figuring out what should be the code and how they will save it. So this is the first message that will initiate the conversation. And that's why the function is called initiate chat. And that is coming from user proxy to assistant. So user proxy is saying to assistant that do this. So assistant says, sure, here is the Python code that you can save in the file name fib.py. This code will print first 20 Fibonacci numbers. And that's the code. And here user proxy actually executes the code gets the number, right? Execute them again, just to verify. And then it says, it seems like the code has been executed twice as the sequence of first 20 Fibonacci number is printed twice. However, the output is correct. The first 20 Fibonacci numbers are these. Please ensure that you run the code once, avoid duplication and termination. That's the feedback to user proxy. And let's see if they saved it. Yep, fib2.py. And if you open it, there you go. A Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers. It already gave you an explanation and then a code that is very well documented. So imagine this. This is just a simple example. If you want to create a complex code, you would be wise to have a couple of engineers, a couple of testers, a couple of critiques, create like a complex system of these AI agents talking to each other. And by the time you wake up, you possibly have an amazing functioning code or a really heavy API call bill, but I bet it's going to be the first one. Now, before I show you another example, I want to talk about this block of code. It is an IPython magic code. So you don't need to worry about too much, but I'm just going to give you a flying overview. What does, what does this code do? So this code actually does a really simple thing. You know, when the code is generated by AI models, such as these lines, they just automatically run it without our human involvement. So instead of us copy pasting and running it, it just runs it for itself. So without even worrying about what this line of code do, we're just going to move on to the next part where we have created already an assistant and a user proxy agent. We just changed the task. So I said, plot Fibonacci numbers from zero to 1000, make the chart beautiful, iteratively improve upon your code and make the chart gradient colorful and beautiful. So this is something that I just came up with just to test it out. And once I ran this line of code, it actually generated Fibonacci number from zero to 1000, the code for that, and then it actually plotted the plot right here. So you see, I already have a, like a pretty good starting point. But then, then I said that, okay, iteratively improve upon your code to make the chart really colorful, gradient, beautiful. So there we go. Somehow it figured out that let's make the chart colorful by making the dots 
differently. And then one time I just used this line. Okay, make the chart beautiful. And then I remove this part and it gave me a different result. Let's see how it works this time. And see this time it actually generated something different. So it started with a blue chart, blue line, no gradients, no gradients second time as well. And then the third time it added gradients instead of a dot chart, it created like a continuous line chart. And then it added gradients to the line and plus you have a gradients on the side on the other axis as well. So there you go folks, AI agents that can do your repetitive tasks for you even faster and with higher quality. Let me know down in the comments what kind of ideas you are trying to do, how you are trying to use Autogen in your workflow to improve it. And if you found the video useful, consider watching some of my other past works. Join this tiny community of AI enthusiasts and let's make some cool stuff together. See you in the next video.